The following instructional video from 3D Biotech highlights the assembly of 3D Biotech's perfusion bioreactor for in vitro culture of cells using the closest in vivo conditions such as three-dimensional geometry and perfusion. The 3D perfusion bioreactor is composed of four major parts, a peristaltic pump, four media reservoir bottles, four 3D bioreactor chambers, and four CO2 humidifier bottles. Cells will grow on stacked scaffolds in the bioreactor chamber while nutrients perfuse the scaffolds continuously in a recirculation loop. As a first step, place the autoclaved media reservoir and CO2 humidifier bottles on the aluminum stand. For purpose of this video, we will use one set of bottles. Then place the aluminum stand and secure it on the aluminum base frame. Following, take the medical grade silicon tubing out of the autoclaving bags and prepare for assembly of media and CO2 O2 transport tubing. Each media and gas perfusion tubing is matched to each bottle set. Within each bottle set, media and gas perfusion tubing has been color coded to match a pressure stamped letter on top of the bottle's metal cap. For example, R for red and B for blue. The color scheme reduces tubing assembly time and prevents tubing mismatch. To assemble the media perfusion tubing, take the orange labeled end tubing and press fit it on the metal peg with the letter O for orange. Unwind the perfusion tubing, secure it on the left hook on the side of the aluminum stand. Continue to unwind towards the peristaltic pump. From left to right, unhook the first pump cassette by applying downward pressure on the distal end. Lift the cassette and place the peristaltic tubing along the length of the bioreactor using the tubing's plastic stoppers. As seen on this snapshot, the peristaltic tubing should always be under tension to ensure pressure-driven flow. The tension on the tubing is generated by securing the two plastic stoppers at each end of the bioreactor cassette. After securing the peristaltic tubing, place the cassette back in the pump cassette holder. Following, hook the proximal end of the cassette first and hook the distal part last. Press down the distal part on the oval mound to secure the cassette. The user should hear a clicking sound when secured. Make sure the cassette is firmly hooked. Then bring the remaining media perfusion tubing towards the front between the aluminum stand and the peristaltic pump. Pass the tubing through the bioreactor chamber holder and connect the red tubing end to the letter R on the media reservoir bottle. This completes the media recirculation loop. Take the second tubing set out of the autoclaving bag. To assemble the CO2 O2 perfusion tubing, take the blue labeled tubing and press fit it on the metal peg with the letter B for blue on the humidifier bottle, pre filled with 25 milliliters of sterile water. Unwind the gas perfusion tubing towards the peristaltic pump. From left to right, unhook the second pump cassette by applying downward pressure on the distal end. Lift the cassette and place the peristaltic tubing along the length of the bioreactor cassette using the tubing's plastic stoppers as previously demonstrated. Bring the remaining gas perfusion tubing towards the front between the aluminum stand and the peristaltic pump. Secure the tubing using the right hook and press fit it on the metal peg with the letter G for green. This completes the assembly of media and gas perfusion tubing sets. As a last step, place two air syringe filters with their respective color-coded tubing, yellow on the media reservoir and green on the humidifier bottle. The following is a snapshot of the final tubing assembly. An important point, the large tube fitting seen here between the red and white plastic stoppers is used during the media equilibration step. Later in the process, the plastic tube fitting will be replaced by the 3D perfusion chamber. In preparation for media equilibration, have cell culture media and serological pipettes ready during this step. Media is only added to the media reservoir. Remove the clear silicon cap from the media reservoir. Keep strict aseptic conditions during this process. Fill the media reservoir bottle with the required volume of media, depending on your time culture needs. The bottle can hold up to 90 milliliters of media. After filling up the bottle, put the clear silicon cap to seal the opening. This table gives exact prefill volumes for the bioreactor chamber formats and perfusion tubing. These volumes have to be taken into account when calculating the total volume for long-term cell maintenance. Move the bioreactor by holding the base metal frame to a water pan free cell culture incubator. Turn on the pump and set the peristaltic pump to 15 RPM. Make sure there is bubbling inside the media reservoir bottle. 
While media equilibration is taking place, prepare for 3D bioreactor seeding. Prior to seeding, shells should be resuspended in a total volume equal to the total number of scaffolds multiplied by its seeding volume. The total cell suspension volume is determined using total scaffold number and format chosen for the experiment. For example, an experiment using four chambers in the PS1520 insert require a total of 40 scaffolds and a seeding volume of 60 microliters. For a total cell suspension volume estimate of 2.4 milliliters. First, grab a scaffold along its diameter and carefully lower it into the bioreactor chamber. Second, place an O-ring using the O-ring pusher to lower the O-ring, doing downward circular motions. Thirdly, using a pipette, dispense the exact cell suspension volume into the center of the scaffold. Lastly, load another scaffold into the bioreactor chamber. The previous loading sequence scaffold O-ring cell suspension scaffold has been optimized to make the cell seeding process user friendly. Repeat the same loading sequence until stacking a total of 10 scaffolds and dispending each scaffold with the required cell suspension volume. Once the whole bioreactor chamber is loaded, close the bioreactor chamber with the bioreactor chamber cap. At this point, the bioreactor chamber has to be prepared for static incubation. Place a piece of silicon tubing with a ball bearing to seal the bottom of the bioreactor chamber. Following, place a piece of tubing with a syringe filter on top of the bioreactor chamber. We promote the use of a syringe filter to maintain aseptic conditions and prevent contamination during transit. At this point, the bioreactor chamber is ready for three hours incubation in a regular incubator with a water can. The optimized three hour static incubation time will allow the cell suspension to wet the porous structure and promote cell adhesion into, onto the polymer surface. After three hours of static incubation and media equilibration, bring the bioreactor and the bioreactor chamber into the cell culture hood. As a first step, clamp on the red and white tubing stoppers. Take the bioreactor chamber and remove the top and bottom tubing. Following, detach the bottom media perfusion tubing from the large tube fitting and connect the perfusion tubing to the bottom of the bioreactor chamber. Slide the bioreactor chamber through the bioreactor chamber holder and secure it with the metal slider. Then remove the plastic fitting and press fit the remaining tubing to the top of the bioreactor chamber. Make sure to unclip the red and white plastic tubing stoppers before running the 3D perfusion bioreactor. The following still image shows a comparison between the bioreactor prior to media equilibration and 3D perfusion. Here, the media perfusion loop is connected by the large plastic fitting between the red and white tubing stoppers on the left. In preparation for 3D perfusion, the large plastic stopper is replaced by the seated bioreactor chamber seen here on the right. Once placing the bioreactor chamber back into the water pan free cell culture incubator, set the peristaltic pump RPM to produce a mean flow velocity of 0.2 centimeters a minute, as seen in the following velocity and RPM table. This value has been optimized to increase initial seeding efficiency under flow conditions for 24 hours. Refer to this table for other RPM and flow velocities of interest. In the previous instructional video, we have shown two basic steps to achieve 3D perfusion using 3D polymer insert technology. First, 3D seeding following our optimized seeding protocol and static incubation of seeded bioreactor for three hours in regular tissue culture conditions. In addition, the bioreactor should be in media equilibration mode during static incubation of bioreactor chamber. After three hours, the bioreactor chamber is connected to the equilibrated media for 24 hours of a low flow rate. After 24 hours, the system is ready for a long-term perfusion.